Man, we had a viewer ask for a video that kind of went over slopes, uh, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, and that kind of thing. So what we're going to do is, is uh, we're just going to go help, we'll go over uh, finding slope first. And after we go over finding slope, we're going to go through um, some important slopes that we should uh, kind of have memorized. And then we're going to do uh, a couple of practice problems using those concepts. So really, there are a couple of ways for finding slopes. The formula way is the most common way of it being taught. You say that the M is, you've heard maybe the change in Y over the change in X, the rise of the run, or the most common Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So if you have a problem where, for instance, you have two coordinates, let's say we have a 3 comma 5 and a negative 2 comma 7, and you need to find the slope of this guy, um, you could do a little bit, uh, you could do it fast or slow. Um, the really, really slow way would be to label off every single one of these and say, hey, my first X value is 3. My first y value is 5. My second x value is negative 2. My second y value is 7. You don't really need to label those all off, but for some people it's helpful because then they can just plug it right into the formula as you go. Either way, though, for this particular question, I'm just going to do it the way I kind of think about it. I'm not even going to look at this, and I'm going to say it's the second y value minus the first y value divided by the first uh, second x value, sorry, minus the uh, first y value or x value, x2 minus x1, and you do this, we're going to end up with 2 over negative 5, and we would just leave it like this as our slope. However, I like to say that there's a formula way 2. The formula way number 2, let's go ahead and switch up the numbers. We're not really going to be doing anything else with this, but I think it's great to try to do them in your head when possible. So let's say we had like 2 comma negative 5 and um, maybe 4 comma 7. Now, in order, this is how I do these questions, is remember that this definition over here is the same exact thing as the change in y divided by the change in x, which we can abbreviate in a fancy way by saying that it is delta y over delta x, the so change in y over the change in x, which is going to be very useful when you get to calculus anyways. What we can do is we could say, what is the difference between these two? How far is it on a number line from negative 5 to 7? So if you're like thinking, here's my number line, right? And I have a negative 5 here and a 7 over here and a 0 in the middle. How far is that? We might be able to say, you know what? Definitely 12 apart there. Likewise, how far are 2 and 4? Well, I think you can easily figure out that 2 and 4 are 2 apart. Um, and therefore, the slope is 6. It's that easy. Um, you really don't need to think about it too much um, when you're doing it that way. Um, so uh, that's the way I like doing it. Um, you do need to be careful with your negative signs because on occasion you can uh, mess up your negative signs. You do need to go in one direction the entire time. So from here, I went from here to here. I, so I made sure it was a positive change. But if I was going the other way around, they would both be negative, like from 4 to 2 or from 7 to negative 5. Um, that's another way of thinking about it. You do need to be careful with your negatives and positives, and if your teacher is a little obnoxious, too. Now, there's also a graphing way to do it. If you're given a graph, it's actually the easiest type of problem, and the reason why is all you have to do is count. What I'm talking about is that you're trying to go all the way to this letter B, and you simply count. It is like 1, 2, 3. So therefore, our change in x right here, our change in x is equal to 3. And likewise, I can count going down from there to 1, 2. Our change in y is negative 2. And therefore, we would write the slope of the line AB is equal to 3 over negative 2. And you can kind of just leave it like that. And there's a nice, easy way of doing it in the event that you're given the graph. Now, I did say there's some important slopes and definitions. The important slopes and definitions is there are a couple of them that you end up just memorizing. The ones that you end up memorizing for the two types of slopes that you want to have are going to be the vertical slopes. That is to say, whenever you have a, a line that goes straight up and down, as well as the horizontal slopes, the lines that go straight left and right. The straight left and right ones have a very, very easy value. The straight left and right ones always have a slope of zero no matter what, and that's because they don't go up or down at all. On the other hand, these ones, the slope we would say is undefined. And the reason why it is undefined is because anytime you calculate the formula, the change in x, which is on the bottom, and by the way, I totally messed this problem up. Oh, no. Negative 2 over 3, change in y over the change in x. Oh, my gosh, Mr. Richards. 
Um, I messed that one up, had to fix it. Um, anyways, our slope is undefined, and because our slope is undefined um, here, every single time we're dividing by a change in x, which is nothing, you're dividing by 0, and you're not able to divide by 0. Anyways, let's try out um, some practice problems after the definitions. Definitions is if you have parallel lines, parallel lines by definition have the same slope, and uh, perpendicular lines, perpendic Euler lines instead have a uh, negative reciprocal slopes. So we say uh, negative reciprocal slopes. And when you say a negative reciprocal, what you're talking about is if I have a number like 7 over 5, the negative reciprocal is negative 5 over 7. And if I have like a whole number like 3, the negative reciprocal will be negative a third. Um, and that's pretty much it for negative reciprocals. But slopes like this would be perpendicular. Let's go ahead and try some practice problems. So these practice problems, if it asks you a question like, hey, here are these four coordinates, you need to figure out are these lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Here's how you go about it. First, you need to figure out what the slope is. So to figure out what the slope is for these problems, you're going to do that same exact idea we just talked about, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to use the full version of the formula every time. So we have y2 minus y1 over, and now we have x2 minus x1. Um, you can use your calculator for this if you would like. Remember that your calculator, if you happen to have one of these TI-84s, has a fraction button built in. The fraction button's right here, alpha y equals enter. If you couldn't see that button, it's alpha y equals enter. And you can type this in exactly as it appears. 0 minus negative 3 over negative 6 um, minus negative 8. And if you type it in just as it appears, you get 3 over 2. Please note, you could have done that in your head for sure. 0 minus negative 3, 0 plus 3 is 3, and six, negative 6 plus 8 is 2. I think you could have that, done that one in your head if you really wanted to. Likewise, doing this next one, letter uh, for DE, the slope of this one, we have our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if we have that, I'm going to do this one by hand, negative 6 um, divided by, it uh, looks like, I wrote minus negative 1, I didn't do it. Um, that's negative 5 plus 1 is going to be 4. Now, if we went ahead and uh, reduced this one, we'd end up with uh, negative 3 over 2. Now, these aren't the same. They're not negative reciprocals. So we would say these guys are neither negative, or neither parallel nor perpendicular. Um, they are simply neither um, because they're, they're not exactly the same or upside down versions of each other. The other types of problems that you might experience are questions like this, where you're told in advance that the lines are parallel. So it's not like the previous one where you have to figure it out. You're told they're parallel, but you don't know what x is over here. So what you're going to do is, is anytime you have exactly parallel slopes, what that means is, is that their slope formulas have to be identical. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to say we have y2 minus y1. So I did y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. There's our x1 up there. And that is going to be equal to y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Um, and now we just have to simplify and solve this problem kind of like a regular algebra problem. So to simplify this one, let's do negative 5 minus 15. That's going to give us negative 20. Remember to use a calculator anytime you have those negatives if you're struggling. 3 minus negative thir 3 minus 13 is negative 10, and negative 3 minus negative 7 is going to be a positive 4. After you do that, this is where you might want to use that algebra 1 trick of cross multiplying. So we're going to have negative 20 times 4, which is negative 80. And remember when you are multiplying this, it's kind of like you're doing distributive property with the parentheses around that. So in this one, you'd end up with a negative uh, 10 uh, and then uh, uh, plus a 10x. And now it should be super easy to solve doing that uh, regular adding 10 to both sides of the equation, or you could have done the switcheroo, um, it would have ended up with negative 70 is equal to 10x. Divide both sides by 10. I'm totally out of room, but you're dividing both sides by 10, and you'll get negative 7 is equal to x, and we're done with that version of the question. Now, the last type of problem you might end up seeing are going to be questions like this, where you're told that, hey, these guys are perpendicular, and what is y? 
So the, in this type of problem, if you're looking to figure out what y is now in the perpendicular, they're not going to be exactly equal to each other, but instead negative reciprocals of each other. So on one of them, instead of having, uh, you know, on one side, you'll have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But on the other side, you're going to have a negative of, and now you're going to flip it upside down x2 minus x1 over y2 minus y1. So it's kind of got to flip it upside down and figure it out and do what you can from there. So let's do this. On the left-hand side here, we have negative 11. Um, and if you cannot read my handwriting, I apologize. That is a negative 3 here. So negative 11 minus negative 3, y2 minus y1 over, and now we have x2 minus x1. And that is going to be equal to, and because it's a negative reciprocal, we flipped it upside down and made it negative. So um, now we're going to be doing our x2 on top minus our x1, don't forget the negative in front of the whole thing, divided by, and now we have our y2 uh, minus our y1. Just like the previous question, now we need to simplify this whole thing. Negative 11 minus negative 3 is going to be negative 8. 4 minus 11 is negative 7. And then a 3 minus a 5 is 8 and a y minus 9, and don't forget there's a negative in front of the entire thing. Just like the previous question, now we're going to cross multiply. So that y minus 9 is being thrown up there, and you have negative 8y plus 72, and you're doing that distributive property. And then negative 8 times negative 7 is 56. Then using maybe a switcheroo, negative 8y is equal to 56 minus 72. Use our calculator because I am getting lazy here. 56 minus 72, and that'll give you that negative 16. Divide both sides by that negative 8. Cross them out, and you get y is equal to 2. Boom, we finished it up. We got our uh, problem done. Hopefully this was useful to you, and have a great rest of your day.